Finally, a decent Jasper Lake laptop. So the Jasper Lake, if you're unaware, it is the successor to the Gemini Lake. It's low-end Intel, but it is 11th gen, 10 nanometers now, finally. Four cores, maximum turbo is 2.8 gigahertz. I'm talking about the Sauron N5100 that is powering this. Being only a six watt chip, it is just intended for low-end computing, so basic computing. This model here is called the Larkbook X from Chewy, and it's probably the best there is for the Jasper Lakes so far, I think, for the price point. So we have a full metal build, apart from the palm rest, large touchpad, very good keyboard, and the best part is the screen. It's an excellent screen, 2K touch with 10 touch points, IPS, very good color coverage, no pulse width modulation flicker, and Chewy has even, once and for all, fixed the hinge with a new design in this model. So the rest of the spec, while well, it does have eight gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of SATA 3 storage, Wi-Fi AC, and a 38 watt hour battery. This video is sponsored by the all new Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 14 with 3K screen, 11th gen Intel Core i7, and optional RTX 3050 Ti graphics. And it can be configured with Linux or Windows, dual boot. See the link in the description for more info. So the laptop itself, and then the power supply is all that's included. It's a 24 watt one. Our total travel weight with the little tiny power supply is 1.47 kilos. So excellent weight here for a 14 inch metal laptop. And we've got another decent screen in this from Chewy. So it's 14 inches and the resolution, I'll just show you now here, we'll go into the device display settings and you'll see that 150% scaling. So it's 2240 by 1400 and 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So the brightness, I've measured it and it does come out to be 371 nits, which is very good. It's okay, not exactly the brightest I've seen, and the touch response is very good, and I'm finding it to be really accurate as well, and there seems to be no lag too with it, so, oh, you can see when I move that around, and that's just the way it is with this particular CPU, but referring to just the touch response and things, it is excellent, really good screen. So it has 99% sRGB, NTSC, that is 71%, Adobe RGB, is 76%, great for this price group and category of laptop. And then P3, 77%. So it's a very nice screen, sharp resolution, good brightness. The contrast, well, it's an IPS, so the blacks don't look as deep as OLED and they're never going to be able to match that. But again, for the price point and this category of laptop, it is a very good screen. So I hope Chewy continue with this trend of using really good panels in their products. And the other thing I like about the hinge is they've got metal now in the bottom of where the hinge is, and it does feel a lot better. So I can move this and it feels quite stiff, but when you tap on the screen too, there's a bit of bounce, but it's not bad. You're always going to get that bounce, even on high-end premium $2,000 touchscreen laptops, you're going to always have that. But the hinge really does feel just so much better than what we've had on previous gen the lid of the Larkbook X is made out of alloy. We do have a Chewy logo here. Now it's not a sticker, you cannot remove this. So it will not be opened one-handed. No, you do need to use two hands to open it up. Now this keyboard is the typical style of keyboard we get from Chewy. I happen to be a big fan of it. I do like it. I think it's a decent keyboard. I think it's very good to type on. So backlit, it does have two stages of lighting, which I'll show you now. This is currently the brightest setting, which is the second stage, and then that is the first if you want to dull it down a little bit and save a tiny bit on battery. Now, because it's a 14-inch laptop, we have a little bit more room. We've got our home, end, page up and down keys here, full-sized arrow keys. Power button is not in the place of where the delete button is, which is good. I haven't accidentally tapped it. We've got our typical shortcuts here, media shortcuts, function keys over here. All up, it is a nice keyboard to type on. I really do like it. And the keycaps feel good. They curve in ever so slightly and pressing down really hard. There is a tiny bit of flex there, but really no bounce. It's a good keyboard, comfortable. What about our touchpad? So nice and large. Again, it's a typical style from their previous generations like the Jimmy Book and the CoreBook X. It is a good touchpad. I really don't have any problems with it. 
It's not an amazing touchpad, but it does the job. Finer movements are accurate. It supports gestures, of course, made of plastic, smooth finish, and it does have a left and right mouse button built in it. Now we have a nice slim build with this. So it's metal all around on the underside, the lid, the sides too as well. And we're looking at about 14 millimeters here, the thickness, which is not bad at all. So it's quite slim. And here we do have a status LED, full spec type C port. So this supports power delivery up to 40 watts, data, and then video out 4K 60 tested. Here's our DC plug in there for powering it. If you don't want to use power delivery in type C. And on the right, we have a micro SD card reader. The cards do sit in flush, they don't stick out. Combo 3.5 millimeter jack, so of course headphone and microphone. And then right here is a USB 3 port, which does power external hard drives without any problems. The underside of the Lark box, this is all made out of the same alloy, which is a soft alloy, very easy to scratch, but it looks nice. I like this dark gray look. Two downwards firing speakers. These ones, they sound pretty good, and I'll give you a sample of them later on. And an easy access hatch to our 22 by 80 millimeter M.2 SATA 3 slot. And the internal, so a little difficult to get access to this and you don't need to do this, all right? No one needs to go in here because nothing is replaceable, upgradable, unless of course maybe in five years time you need to put a new battery in. So in order to get that lid off, I did have to remove two screws here underneath the rear feet. So be careful of that. That fools up a lot of people and they end up damaging it. So I really like what I'm seeing here in the internal. So we've got plenty of copper over the Jasper Lake in 5100. That's great. But not only that, we have the new hinge design, which is external. You don't have it hidden behind the glass, which was on the older model. So they've made a big change there. Everything's all talked up very nicely, which is good. We have a metal backing behind the keyboard. That's why it has no bounce and flex. And a bit of a spoiler here, I can tell you that this copper is working well because thermals don't go over about 67 degrees Celsius. I'll drive right there, and then four little speakers, which uh, as you'll see later on, they do actually sound a lot better than what we used to get from previous gens. And our battery, which is 38 watt hours, I'm able to squeeze about seven hours out of this, which is really good. That's only light work with the brightness right down, by the way. So there you can see that new hinge, and it's all talked out well. They even put a bit of thread locking solution on the screws, on all of the screws, and there's the hinge there. So you can see completely new design. I hope this is going to stand the test of time where the other models simply didn't and ran into a lot of problems, but it's great to see them finally improve upon this. So good build quality, especially for the price. Now it does ship with Windows 10. However, I've run the little test here that we get from the PC check and you can see that this PC meets Windows 11 requirements, so that's great. It does have the TPM 2.0 secure boot, can be enabled and turned on. So everything we need for Windows 11 is there. I'm not too sure if you'll be able to get more performance with Windows 11. I haven't done enough tests here with that to find out. Now, in here you can see the device manager. What else have we got on board that is of interest? So try not to make this too long. So Windows 10 Home, now it is of course licensed, fully activated, no problems with that. Under the device manager, the wireless you will see is a wireless AC card. So real tech here. I would have preferred wireless AX, so Wi-Fi 6. I guess that might have pushed the cost up a little bit, but still I think they should have gone for Wi-Fi 6, would have been a lot better. You get Bluetooth 5.2 normally with those cards, and we're on Bluetooth 4 spec with this Realtek card. Now, the throughput from it, around just over 300 megabits per second, so it's not a super wireless card, and as I showed you, there is no gigabit LAN on this or anything like that either, so you do have to put up with just being just limited there. You can use a Type-C or USB to LAN adapter, of course, if you wanted to. So the SSD, that NETAC that's inside, you can see SATA 3 spec, so NVMe would have been great in this, especially again at the price of this laptop, but we sadly don't get it. I would have liked to have seen it, but if it pushed that price up a little bit, I guess they had to make some compromises since they've gone with such a nice screen in this unit that we do have. So a couple of benchmarks here that I can show you, well, just the one actually, is Geekbench 5. So it gets 
573 for single core score, and then multi core score is 14, just over 1400. Now, if this was a 10 watt part, if it was the N5095, this score here would be 2000 points, and this would be around about 630. So I do hope that Chewy later on gets hold of that particular system on the chip, that Jasper Lake, to help boost our performance. Now the Intel cell on the N5100, it's a quad core, 10 nanometers finally, and the turbo's faster, a little bit faster than what we had on the previous gen with the N4100, the Gemini Lake. So it's now 2.8 gigahertz, but it's the limit really that six watts that this is configured to that is going to be capping our performance. Now RAM speeds, it does support 2,933 megahertz top speeds here, but we don't have that because I have checked this out. If I go here into our device manager, uh, not into that device manager here, you can see that the memory is only running at 2.4 gigahertz. It is at least in dual channel, so we're not missing out on memory bandwidth. However, we are missing out on memory speeds there, which would aid the performance overall. Not only on the CPU side of things, but then the UHD graphics, which does have 24 execu executional units now, compared to, I believe it was 12 or 16 that we had on the previous gen. Video playback performance, thanks to the native decoding that we've had for some time now with these chips, HEVC does run really well. Now this is my Jellyfish test file, so 140 megabits per second, 10 bit 4K. Initial little stutter, and then it's fine, okay? This plays then smooth, and it does look really good on the screen. I mean, this is a fantastic screen. The big plus here, the big positive of this particular model is, of course, this touch screen, lovely screen, and what about 4K60? That is also running just fine and looks really good on the screen. So for content like this, watching movies, YouTube, very good. Sample from the webcam now. So this is a 720p only webcam. And I do have some normal lighting on at the moment. And what you're listening to is the built-in microphone. So webcam quality little grainy, it looks a little bit washed out, nothing amazing, but at least we do have a webcam and it's in the top bezel in a normal location. Now some good news here with those downfiring speakers, they do actually sound pretty good. They're not bad, they are finally improving at what they have been now for the past year or so. They used to be absolutely terrible. A little bit of bass, good reasonable volume to them and I'll give you a sample at 100%. I'm happy with them, I think they're fine. They're not the best you'll ever hear, but they're fine, they do the job. And just how is the general performance? So it's not a laptop you'd buy expecting to play Battlefield 2042 at 60 frames per second, okay? With amazing graphics, all high end settings. Of course not, this is quite low end. So scrolling performance here in Chrome, that's fine. But what I wanted to do is my little test that I like to do, just test out uh, searching cats and then opening up a lot of different tabs and keep an eye on the performance and then the memory too. How is that going to be is it going to hit 100%? There we go, 100% load. That is normal though, as it's loading all of this in. So a rough amount of tabs here. I think I've got, what, about 10 open there. Just open up a couple more. That's got videos in it. That's a heavy page. And let's just search quickly cars here. So these kind of general computing needs is what it's good at. So just light tasks is all that Jasper Lake, at least at six watts, is going to be able to handle. Really not much more. Okay, so swapping over to these tabs. Uh, this got an embedded video in it, but that doesn't seem to be, actually that's not lagging out at all. That seems quite smooth. That's good. So what about over here? Another embedded video. That seems smooth enough. That seems quite good actually. All right, Wikipedia, that is not a heavy website at all page. And a lot of the searches aren't that heavy either. Okay, so this has a lot of images in there. A little bit of lag just coming through them. So it really depends on the websites you're looking at, but most of the time you can run quite a lot of tabs here. Even with eight gigabytes of RAM, it's just enough to be able to do this. Now it does have like 256 megabytes dedicated to the UHD graphics. So it's performing pretty well here, swapping between those tabs. Yeah, I mean, that's good. So this is really all this chipset 
is really good at. Don't be confused or misled into thinking that you can run and edit like 4K videos like a pro. Now you can do basic, maybe full HD edits, but super basic. And even then I wouldn't really want to do it. Remember, it's fanless, it's only six watts. Gaming performance, so Counter-Strike, just 800 times 600 resolution here, you're getting around 30 frames per second. It is just playable, but wow, <laughs> a lot of lag with smoke and then other teammates on screen. So not really a gaming system at all, but these lighter, older titles you can kind of play if you don't mind these choppy, terrible frame rates. But something like Skyrim is going to be able to run on this, but on the low settings, of course. And yeah, terrible gameplay, I know, I died instantly, but still, look at that frame rate, struggling to get 30 on a busy server here. Now, what about battery life? So because it's only a six watt part, it's actually pretty good, even though it's not a huge battery. Well, it looked quite big when we looked at the internals, but it's very thin, that's why it's so large. It will go for over seven hours. Now that of course is just me doing light tasks, so just being in Chrome, watching videos or streaming a bit of YouTube, with the brightness set relatively low, mind you, at about 30%. So factor that in. If you do a little bit more demanding work, the battery life, of course, is going to drop down a bit. But still very good because, well, yes, it's low powered, only six watts. Now, I would really love Chewy to release this model with a 10 watt Jasper Lake in it, or even if they could configure it up to 15 watts, then we'll get a lot more performance. So that is really the only major con, well the only thing that I really think would bother people is the fact that performance is not amazing. It's slightly better than the previous gen, but it really held back by that 6 watt power limit. Hopefully we can bypass that. Now if you're asking about the BIOS, it is completely locked down unfortunately. Well not completely, but we cannot adjust power limits. Hopefully that hack that worked on the Gemini Lake and the Apollo Lake will work later on if someone can figure that out so we can increase the power limits because there's certainly thermal headroom. Thermals are great on this. So the best thing is the screen. It's fantastic. I really do like it. It's like having a premium screen in a low-end laptop, which is basically what it is. So many of the $1,000 or even $2,000 laptops that I look at would have a color gamut very similar to this. What was it, 76? percent Adobe RGB is excellent. And the touch response, the accuracy, the sharpness of the screen, the brightness, no flickering at all at lower brightness levels too as well is another positive. The keyboard, like the previous models, not a lot has changed and why change it when it's good, just leave it alone, right? Good keyboard to type on, good touchpad, build quality, the internals look so much better. They've even got the speakers isolated with little rubber mounts to stop them vibrating and the speakers sound so much better too. So they are definitely improving and I do hope that they will be shipping this with Windows 11 out of the box. That would be another positive. So I have to nitpick with this if I did and I will. That would be another Type-A port would be great. Another Type-C also would have been great on there. So we've got the full spec Type-C with power delivery at 40 watts is good. And I would have loved to have seen uh, Wi-Fi 6 support on this. So it's only a Wi-Fi AC card, Wi-Fi 5, which is, I think for the spec is still fine, just like the SATA 3. So all up, if you're looking for a laptop with a great screen, a touch screen, and you're only gonna be doing basic things like emails, documents, spreadsheets, things like that, surfing the web, watching movies, this is an ideal laptop, I believe, for that. And so far, the best I've come across out of the Jasper Lake laptop. So thank you so much for watching my review here of the Lark Book X from Chewy. I hope to catch you in the next one. Do subscribe for more.